¿Qué tal? Saludos a todos los seguidores del Mundo Deportivo. Estamos con Mukhtar, Omar Sharif Mukhtar, eh, director y creador del espectáculo Messi 10 by Cirque du Soleil. Y nos va a explicar un poco brevemente cuáles son sus acciones, cuáles son las claves de este, de este gran espectáculo. Uh, first of all, guys, uh, thank you for, for attending us and for speaking with us. Uh, I want to know uh, what did you think the first time that someone told you to think about or to prepare or to create a show about Lionel Messi? First thing, I was extremely excited and then straight away after, I was extremely worried because it was like two feelings that came quickly back to back because this is the greatest player in the world, you know? I'm a huge football fan, so that's where the excitement came from. And then I realized, oh no, it's the, it's the best player in the world, so we, we, we have to do him justice, you know, in the show. So I felt it was excitement and uh, worry at the same time, but the worry is great because it pushes us to bring the best out of us all. Because before working in this in this show, you you, you, you knew about, about you know, Messi? Of course, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm from England, I'm from London, so football is big in London, and I've met people love Messi in London, so I knew about the great uh, career that Messi has had up until now. So um, as soon as the project came on my table, for me it was a must. I didn't think about the contracts, I didn't think about anything, I was like, I have to be this project. What's the, the most difficult thing uh, to, 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 trans, to translate from the pitch to the, to the show area of the, of the characters of Lionel Messi? I think the most difficult thing was that Messi is still breaking records. You know, usually we do shows on artists that uh, have passed, you know, like the Beatles Love we did, you know, uh, the, um, we did Michael Jackson. So he's, their legacy is set, you know, so you have something to work with. Whereas with Messi, you can't say, okay, today we're going to celebrate 643 goals. No, next week is 650, you know, like you can't. So you have to, I, the difficult thing was finding a way to explain the greatness of Messi without being so specific about it. Because this guy is doing amazing things on the pitch and we needed to make sure that metaphorically we can celebrate that on stage with our acrobats. How many hours of you know, Messi images have you seen for prepare all this, all this show? With, uh, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you how many hours of images we've seen, but what I did was I hired an assistant who was a Barcelona fan, you know, an assistant who understood Messi, who understood Barcelona as well as and me, even, even if maybe more, you know. I made sure that we all look, both of us look for all the footages that we asked for, because just in case if I miss something, we will catch it. We couldn't, I couldn't have an assistant who didn't know about it, otherwise we wouldn't be there forever, you know. But it was good, it was, we went through a lot of images, the different types of goals that Messi scored, whether outside of the box, inside the box. The fact he's, so, he's, he's a short guy, but he scores a lot of headers, you know, he scores the headers for a guy his size and his vision. There's a lot of things we learned that I didn't know before when I watch the videos and see that this guy is not only an incredible footballer, but he's also an honest footballer on the pitch as well, and a leader. Did you spoke with Lionel Messi? Yes, we met with Lionel Messi maybe four or five times to show him where we were in the project. You know, I wanted to make sure that the show had to be as authentic as possible. That was very, very important. So we showed him everything that we were doing just to get his honest opinions on everything. And he participated in the show? Sure. Yeah, he, particip he participated. Like, I'll give you one example. Um, at the beginning, I didn't want to include his private life in the show because, he, as we know, he's very quiet. Uh, he doesn't like to be in the limelight too much. But the first thing he said when we presented everything was, this is amazing, this is great, but I would really love if my family can be celebrated on the stage somehow. You know, in one moment where you can celebrate my family. And I was surprised about this because he wants, surprised but excited, because it gives him more content to play with, it gives him more content to celebrate him on stage. So we kept on going back and forth with him, and then at the end he just said, because we invited him to come to our rehearsal so you can see what we're doing. And he said, I don't want to see no rehearsals now. I want to just come to the premiere and see the show like all my fans at the same time so I can enjoy everything for the first time. He said, I trust all of you. Everything I see right now is, is good and it's in the right direction. Just go and uh, create it. And what did you, what did you feel uh, working with Lionel Messi hand to hand? Yeah. As a, as a football fan or as a creator? Because both. <laughs> as, a, well, as a football fan, I mean, it was. It's, it's surreal for me, you know, because this is someone who you grew up watching um, and he's, 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 he's phenomenal on the screen, you know, or when you go to games, but but when you see him up close, he's a, he's a normal guy, he's a normal guy like everybody else, you know, he, 
He could be your older brother. He could be your, you know, your your uncle. He's, he's really, really humble like that, and that's what I learned the most when talking to him. He doesn't have security all around him. The first time I saw him, you know, I went to the bathroom in his office. As I came out, he came through the door and he was on his own. There was no like anybody with him or anything. I expected everybody to be around him, you know. So it was it was strange and it was a bit of a starstruck moment because this is the best player in the world that's standing in front of me shaking my hand, you know? So I think once I got over that, then the professional and the business business element of working with him was hugely influential for the show because he was always smiling, he was always supportive, and he was always excited. People think he's quiet, but when he gets excited and he gets invested, he speaks and he lets us know what he likes. So I, I guess about the rewards that it will be a very, very special show. Yep. And, and what, what would you like people uh, think when they, when they finish uh, watching the show? The biggest message that I, I, I felt when I did all the research on Messi and I spoke to Messi is that this guy is a product of hard work. This guy is a product of never giving up. Like when you watch football, you see the amount of times that people foul this guy, the amount of time they brought him down on the pitch. He always gets back up. And I think this is the big message I want in the show. Like we say there's a number 10 in all of us, you know, in the show, and you have to find that number 10 within you. Whether you're a footballer, whether you're a human being, wherever you are, whether you're a doctor or a policeman, as soon as you find that, trigger that, and you can be the best you can be. And that's what I want everyone to feel that no matter how hard it gets, you can always get back up and try again because he's the living embodiment of that message. And finally, uh, what team does the creator and director of Messi then by sure to play uh, is fun? It's, uh, we're not doing well right now, but I'm a big fan of Manchester United. Yeah. Would you like uh, to see Messi drop some, some days in Manchester United, but I think it will be difficult. That will be... No, right now I don't want to see Messi in Manchester United because we're probably... It's not going to help him. Okay. We need to fix Manchester United first, but he's, he's, a, he's a Barcelona legend. He's going he's gonna to finish with Barcelona. I hope he finishes with Barcelona because players don't do that nowadays. Players don't have low loyalty to one team. And I feel the one like club man. Yeah, he's the one club man. We had that. The last person we had was Ryan Giggs. You know, he was the one club man. And I still love him to this day because of that. You know, I even love him more than I love Ronaldo. You know, because of how loyal he was. And I feel that's the loyalty that he has for Barca fans. Um, there's no way he's ever going to. So thank, thank you very much. And good you. luck uh, with the show. Thank and you. Thank you. For Appreciate it. Thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. Thank you.